And good evening and welcome to our first ever Race Result webinar. Uh, my name's Elliot, I'm part of the technical support team here at the Race Result headquarters in Germany. Uh, alongside me is my colleague Ugo, who's going to be on our chat answering any questions you have as we go through this webinar. Um, we'd like to reiterate, if you do have any questions related to this topic as we're going on, please do uh, message us in the chat and Ugo will answer anything in the chat and anything we can't answer in the chat. We will answer live here um, on the webinar for everyone to see. So today's topic is going to be covering raw data mode. Now, raw data mode is the new way to time with Race Result 11. Uh, it makes your life as a timer easier and gives you greater control over how you time your race. Um, we're going to be going through today the old method, which is static mode, as we call it. Um, and the disadvantages of using static mode will then move on to raw data mode and show you how uh, it can be used to its full potential. Uh, so today really focuses on the basics. So if you're already experienced with raw data mode, this might not be for you, but if you've never used it before or you're still a little bit unsure about how to make the most of it, uh, stay tuned and hopefully you can learn something today. Uh, so to start with, we'll talk about static mode. Now static mode is uh, how Race Result 11 started. And essentially, it would bring the data in, process it, and that would be set. So let's just have a quick look at how static mode um, works. It is still an option, but it's the past. So here we have a timeline for static mode. Um, and we're representing here where we start timing on our decoder uh, through to where we turn it off at the end of the day. So this is, this is our event day. Um, in static timing mode, the first thing we're going to see really is our T0, our start time. Now you'll see that before T0 here, we don't have any data saved in the event file. Um, in static mode, this is all ignored. So we can't access this data. And some people also like to activate their decoder at T0 at the start time or use the running time to start at the gun start. The risk of this is again that if you get that wrong, you won't have any data to then go back to unless you then rewind your decoder to get the data and it's a little bit more hassle and stress you don't need on event day. So here's our start time, our T0, and everyone's at the start line ready, and off they go. So we get a read here on the start. This person was still on the start line, so they're right after T0. Um, but we're using overwrite results for our start because we want the last time on the start, the last time they had crossed the map. So maybe the first time their Garmin didn't start happens to everyone, right? Um, they pause on the map to get their Garmin started, then they actually start. So here's our actual start time for that participant. Now you'll see here that the first start read we had for them is gone. Because it's been overwritten, we can't use that data for any reason if we needed to. Now in static mode, we'd then have to switch from our start to our finish time points. We'd have two, finish, uh, two time points set up and we'd switch from start to finish. But in some races, there's that person who gets stuck in the toilet and they're late starters. Now, if I've already switched to the finish at this point, this will be shown as a finish time. The system doesn't know it's not a finish time. Uh, so we'd have to delete that out and manually enter it as a start time, which is, less than ideal. So we've taken that one out, manually changed it, and we're moving on with the rest of the race. We have a split point in the middle. And as they come into the finish, we record a finish result for them. Then after the finish, we get a couple of reads. Maybe they go back for a photo or they're leaving the venue. And these will be actually saved as a dummy finish. So a dummy finish actually shows in your results. You can still see the times. It is saved but we couldn't change the finish time automatically. We'd have to manually copy and paste this into the finish result and overwrite it manually. Uh, so it's not ideal. Now, by doing this as well, all of these results that you see, the start, the split, and the finish are fixed points. They're now calculated and they cannot be changed unless you manually override it. So we'll have a quick demo of how that actually works in practice. Uh, we have an event set up here, you'll see. Uh, it's just a fun run. I have two contests, a fun run for the adults and a separate kids race. So let's just go through our setup very quickly. 
Uh, as I already mentioned, we have our two contests set up. We have our two timing points set up. We have the start set to overwrite result, as I mentioned. And we have the finish uh, using default fill result sequentially. So this is, this is using static mode. In our results, we have four results set up. We have the finish time, their net time, their start time, and their finish time. Uh, so my finish is a calculation using T11 minus T0, and net is T11 minus T10. So I've got to manually write these calculations in for everything. So let's go through this race and see how it's going to work. So just going to quickly go and open up my transponder module in another window. I'm going to connect to, I've just got one of our USB timing boxes here, really useful bit of kit. Uh, just means I can do lots of testing really quickly. And I've got some pre-assigned transponders ready to go. So let's connect to my USB time point and send this to the start. So if I scan these chips now, you'll see that everything is grayed out and being ignored because it's pre-start. Uh, so none of these times are being used. Uh, I'm just going to go and set the start time. And I've got a little window here open just so you can monitor what's happening as the race is going on. So I'm going to go set the start time for the kids and just start them off. So you see we've got Dewey Duck and Louie Duck in the kids race. Uh, we just got five participants here and they've both started. So we've had a start read and you see if we scan it again, that result gets overridden. Uh, we're still in the start, so I can override that as much as I like and that will just keep overwriting itself. So if I forget to change to finish, it will again override my start result. And we've got a little ticking clock on the side just so you can see the race time. So back in our transponder module, I'm now going to have to change from my start to the finish. And when I scan our chips, we get their, we have now have their start time of day, their finish time of day, their total race time from the gun start, and their net time. So great, okay, we, we've got results, everything looks okay. Um, but then Daisy and Donald come up to us and say, hey, our son Huey was running in the kids race as well. What happened? He's not got a result. So let's just switch back to our event file. And let's go have a look at number three, Huey Duck. So now in the time of raw data, we can see he's got results. Uh, we, he's got times even, sorry, um, but no results. It's because he's been assigned to the wrong contest. So we're going to change him to the kids. But he still doesn't have results. Uh, like I said, in static time mode, these times are now completely ignored and it's still before the gun start for Huey. Uh, so he won't have results. Now to put these in, what I'll have to do is I'll have to go and copy and paste his start times and his finish times in to give him a finish result. Um, which, it's, if you've got a lot of people do that by mistake, it's not so fun. Now you also see here, I've just scanned our chips again. We've got dummy finish here, so like I said, if people go back over the finish line for any reason or you get a, an unexpected passing, it will create dummy finish. So the time is there, it's saved, but if I wanted to use this for any reason, I'd now have to copy and paste or cut and paste into our actual finish result. It's a bit of a hassle, so that's why raw mode comes in and making your life a lot easier. And I've got the events set up here in raw mode, but before we go into that, Let's have a look again at our little presentation of our timeline. So here we have the same timeline. I'm going to have exactly the same thing set up here now. Uh, we have the timeline for the whole event. So I'm just restarting the USB box so it's clean for this raw mode event. So before the start, we have a load of reads. People are still on the, finish, uh, on the start line and the times are recorded and saved. Now, you'll see they're grayed out. They are before the start time, before T0, 
So they're still ignored, but they're now saved to this participant's bank of times. So they can be used at any time. So if we need to change our settings, our contest, our start time, we can still use this data. We're going to have our T0 set again, our start time. We have the same first read at the start line, where again, their Garmin, they just can't get it started. Um, they finally get going. Now, in this case, because we're not overriding our result, this first start result is still saved. So we can see that they were stood here on the start line for a while, and this was actually the last time we saw them at the start. So with raw data mode, instead of changing from a start timing point to a finish timing point, we use what's called the minimum lap time. And now minimum lap time has a couple of purposes. It is as the name suggests, the minimum time for a lap, um, but it is also the maximum time for which the software considers a chip read to be a start time, a start result, um, and the earliest time that it can be a finish result. So if we have a look here, here we have our person who was stuck in the toilet. Now my minimum lap time was set here. So this person currently has a finish time. The system thinks it's after the minimum lap time, it's a finish time. But with raw data mode, I can simply move my minimum lap time a little bit later, assuming no one's finished in this time, which they shouldn't do. And the system will automatically recalculate these results so that this is now reflected and this is recorded as a start time. So I don't have to manually change everyone's results. I can just change my minimum lap time. So maybe my setup, I didn't set it adequately um, and I set it too short. So not everyone started before. I can change it and the results will be recalculated dynamically. It's automatically recalculated. Moving on with the race, we have the split time in the middle and we have our finish result. Now again, they've gone back to take a photo on the finish line and they're finally leaving the venue. Um, but in raw data mode, these aren't saved as dummy finish to create extra results. They're just saved to this participant's bank of data. So if for any reason this finish result wasn't the actual finish, uh, maybe there's a little out and back they were supposed to do and they went back and did it, you can simply ignore this time in that participant's raw data and it will automatically recalculate to use the next available finish time. So you see how it adds a lot of advantages in how results are calculated? So let's have a look at how that actually works in practice. Here I have the same event file set up. Uh, it's the fun run with our two contests. Um, we have the same five participants in here, but the change comes in our timing point setup. So you see I have a timing point here called start and finish, and this is set to save raw data only. This is raw data mode, so all it does when it imports this, this data is just saves its participants bank and lets our results calculations do the work. Now I mentioned our minimum lap time as well, it's very important. In our contest settings, for each contest, we set the minimum lap time. Now, I'm only working with one lap in this race. If you have multiple laps, you can set the number of laps and a minimum lap time. If it's just an out and back or using the same start and finish line, keep number of laps to one and your minimum lap time to whatever is necessary for your event. So we've got it set to 30 seconds and 30 seconds. Here's where the magic happens. Now, this isn't optimized yet but we still have the same four results. We have finish, the net, the timing start, and timing finish. But you see, rather than having in our calculation zero time saved to this result, we have a rule. So let's have a quick look. Here's our basic rules that we can use. This is a start with a start time, finish time, chip time, first or last. There's also a whole host of other advanced rules we can use, but today we're looking at the basics. So we're gonna use our start, the last read for, between T0 and T0 plus minimum lap time. Remember how I said minimum lap time is the maximum time after T0, which the system will consider a start result, and the finish. So the finish is essentially the first read after that T0 plus the minimum lap time. Now for now I'm leaving our finish calculation here and net as they were. And we'll come back to that in a little bit to see how we can improve it. Now for this, I'm also going to use our new timing module. Um, so once my local adapter started running,
There we go. Oh, I'm seeing quite a few devices on our network today. Um, just ignore these ones. So this is a new chip timing window. So this is designed to make your life as a timer as simple as possible. So you'll see how you'll either have your local devices connected or any USB devices you have connected as well. Uh, I've got too many local systems on a network. So the USB box is being kicked off. Just give me one second. Ah, my USB cable is faulty. Should now pop up. But you've got a USB cable and time box to click. Ah, sorry, I'll tell you why. It's because I've left it connected in transponder module. Amateur mistake there. There we go. Sorry about that one, guys. It's uh, 8 p.m. here in Germany, but we try and fit everyone in. Uh, so here we have our USB time box showing up now. Um, and all I need to do to get the data from this is assign a time point, and we've only got one, so it automatically filled in as start and finish, and just click play. And it would automatically now um, read all the data from, from our device, whether it's a local system or a USB time box. So let's have a quick look at our present results. So here I have the same, same results output set up for our raw data mode race. So here I am, I'm gonna set our start time now. And now hopefully when I read these chips, here we have our start time. Now please ignore the start time. I've just had to add an offset. Uh, so it's showing as five o'clock in the morning. And like I said, this is now our start read. So again, if I go over this before I'm in a lap time, it will, re -up, it will update with, with the new start time. Now this is where our minimum lap time comes in. So our race time is now past 30 seconds. So our minimum lap time was set to 30 seconds. And now if I scan these chips again, we have a finished result. So we have their um, total time and their net time showing. Uh, exactly the same thing as before, but I didn't have to change anything in between. I didn't have to change my start and finish assignments. I just had to fix our times um, on the USB time box. Um, now again, Huey, as you can see, still doesn't have a result. So let's hop back into our event, have a look at Huey. And again, here's all his results at the start and finish, but he's assigned to the fun run. So let's move Huey to our kids race. And you can see instantly his results are calculated exactly as they should be. And if I go back to our present results output, you can see he's been moved to the correct contest. So that didn't happen in static mode. Now this, the same rules would apply for recalculation with whatever changes you make. So if you change the rules of your results calculations in any way, or you change your start time, your T0, it would recalculate these results as you require. Now I said we can actually make this a bit easier, um, and I'm going to do that. So we don't actually need four results for this race. We want their finish time and we want their net time. So I'm gonna take out our timing start and our timing finish. And for these two results, I'm going to look at the start and finish. But this time, I'm just going to use our rules so I can put our finish time straight in and our chip time straight in. Now I left it like that. We already know we've used this rule the same. It will just show the time of day. So in our time point setup, we can now subtract the start time T0. Um, what that does is that all the data that comes in, the start time is um, subtracted. So that the results that we get through are race time. Now, 
you could if you wanted to start your decoder from zero when everyone starts. But as I already mentioned, there's risks in doing this. If you miss it or make a mistake, uh, or you have overlapping contests, you physically can't do that. Um, so let's now try again. And I'm gonna go back into our, our time module and let's just set this to the future. So that our results are cleared. And I'll go back into our present results tool. And in my time module, I'm gonna set the start time. And I've waved the chips for the start. Now, you won't see anything here because we're not showing the start time. We're not reading this as a result. Um, we're only really showing a finish time and a net time. So as soon as our minimum lap time comes around in about 10 seconds time, um, I'll give it another scan. too early. So there we go. So I mistimed my uh, second scan on the finish. So our net time is only six seconds because it overwrote it. It was still before the minimum lap time when we saw them. Um, but you'll see we have the finish time and the net time. Now I made a mistake there. Uh, my minimum lap time was too short. Maybe they did actually finish beforehand. So if I, in my contest settings, um, you can't see this bit, but I'm just going to go change the minimum lap time to 15 seconds. And when I save that, our results are automatically recalculated, exactly the same as before. Um, so like I said, any settings that you change are automatically recalculated and reflected in the results. So if I change it again, 20 seconds, and let my, result, my present results update quickly. I just missed it. Let's put it back to 30 seconds. There we go. And it's, it's back to where it was. So you see, everything automatically recalculates for any changes you make. Um, so I'm just going to check if we've got any questions that need answering for this section. No? So you might be wondering how you can start using raw data mode. You've seen its advantages. Um, despite a couple of technical glitches we've had, um, it makes timing a race much easier for you, the race timer. Um, so all you need to do is look at your time point settings like we talked about, saving raw data only. Your results now use the calculations and setting a minimum lap time for each of your contests. And that's all you really need to do to get started in raw data mode. And actually today we uh, released the new version of Race Result 11 for download, which is version 11.3.114. Uh, and one of the biggest changes in this you'll find is that uh, the template races that we have in there, when you go to create a new event, uh, now by default use raw data mode. So we've updated these, we've refined them a little bit, uh, you might find a few of the ranks have been renamed to make it clearer for beginner timers, but these are now in raw data mode. You can also go to our knowledge base uh, and search in there for convert from static to raw timing mode. And we have an article in there explaining more about the settings you need to do and also explaining more about some of the rules that you can use in raw data mode. Uh, there are some advanced rules in there, particularly for lap races, um, things that are useful for triathlon in particular as well. Um, so a lot you can do with raw data mode, um, but we're going to talk more about that in our next webinar where we look at some of these advanced features and how you can convert a more advanced race uh, into raw data mode. So one last check for any questions that have been unanswered. Um, can you maybe explain a bit more about the minimum lap time again? Yep. Because it's not clear to everyone. Okay, so our minimum lap time. So I'm just going to quickly go and uh, remove 
some of our results. Let me just bring this window back down to a better size for you. And let's go and delete our timing data and we'll go through this again so you can see. So in our contest setup, uh, under chip timing here, we have two settings, number of laps and the minimum lap time. So the minimum lap time is a setting that really makes a difference for everything. So if I open up our presentation again from raw data mode. So here we have our T0. We have our start reads, that's no problem. And there's our minimum lap time. Now this is the point in the race uh, where everyone has started that you would normally in static mode change from your start to a finish time point. So the minimum lap time um, is the maximum time from your start time, your T0, after which a um, time is considered to be a start result in the start rules. Um, so if we have a time after the minimum lap time and we're using that for the start and finish, the same time point, the system will think it is a finish. Anything before is the start. Now, like I said, we can move this minimum lap time and it will recalculate. So now everything before is a start time, it's recalculated. And everything after will either be the split time because it's a separate time point or our finish. So there's two ways of looking at that. It's a maximum start time and a minimum finish time. Now you could, if you really wanted to, put your minimum lap time somewhere out here. Um, the risk in doing that is if people do DNF and come back early, it might overwrite their start result and you'd have to adjust it again or ignore their times. So it's best to have this just after everyone has started and just for those few people, you can ignore their finish results. So it doesn't give them the finish result. Um, if you are working with multiple laps, uh, using the same start um, and lap point, the same principles apply. So everything up to this point will be considered a lap, lap uh, the pre-start. Everything thereafter is your lap times. And it must have the minimum lap time between each lap. So when working with the same timing point, it's the minimum time between each detection that is then used for a result. So hopefully that makes things a little bit clearer. Uh, if you're still not sure, have a look at our knowledge base. There's some more explanation there. And like I said, have a look at the new templates we have um, with the new version of Races R11. These are all now converted to raw data mode. Uh, so you can see how they're used for a basic lap race, uh, a cycling lap race, or where people have multiple laps, but maybe not all doing the same number of laps. We've done a simple triathlon setup in there, and there's a biathlon as well. And these are all in raw data mode. Uh, the team lap race is coming very soon in the next update. Uh, the other one was a little bit more work as anyone who's used it can appreciate. So I think that concludes today's webinar. Um, hopefully those of you who have never seen raw data mode or a bit unsure about how to use it, now see the advantages it can give you and how you can start using it. And like I said, if you want to start using it, go ahead now. Raw data mode is the future. Any new timers out there, this is how we want to train them from now on. Uh, we won't be looking and supporting as much static timing. It will still be there, but all our future developments will really focus on raw data mode, because as you can see, it's a lot more flexible and a lot more powerful. Uh, so from us here at Race Result, thanks very much for tuning in. And if this has been too quick for you, I apologize, but we want to keep this about half an hour. Um, you can go back and watch these on YouTube at your own pace at any time, or maybe you missed a section. Um, within about 15 to 20 minutes, this video should be ready for you to view online on our YouTube channel uh, free of charge. Thank you very much and have a good day.